whatever, care solves the rules. Um, so these rules are the beginning point for solving any circuit. And um, it's almost like a, you know, Newton's laws of circuit. So let me write down this, but um, I want you to realize that when I have described the Kirchhoff, Kirch, I'll just say Kirchhoff, that's what I'm called, but I know it's, um, yeah, I'll just Kirchhoff. Uh, when I have given you Kirchhoff's rules, you will feel like that I haven't told you anything new. That's the feeling I want you to have. So let me state Kirchhoff's rules. And so Kirchhoff's rules, two H's, um, there are two rules. And um, I think usually people state the loop rule first, but I like to state the junction rule first for a reason that I'll explain. So this is what junction rule says, junction rule. So it's a rule regarding, uh, regarding junctions. What do we mean by junction? Well, um, it's kind of what it sounds like. This is a junction. Right? Like interstate junction. <laughs> um, this is another junction. And to tell you the truth, actually I can treat this as a junction too. But um, um, it, this becomes a trivial junction, uh, you'll see when you see the rule. So this rule involves junctions and it involves a current um, involved with this junction. So what junction rule says is, let's say you have, um, let's say you have a, I'm just gonna draw a part of a circuit. Let's say you have a part of a circuit where several wires meet at this point. And maybe there's some current coming in and there are several different currents going out. And what junction rule says is, well, add up all these currents. Add up all the currents that you labeled as coming in. Add up all the currents you labeled as going out. Then when you add up all those currents, currents coming in is equal to current going out. Do you agree that this should be true? Right? You would have guessed this, right, if I just asked you. Like how, what would be the relationship between the currents coming in and going out? Right? This doesn't surprise anyone. <laughs> the current coming in, why is, it, why is this true? Yeah, conservation of charge. And we talked about how it's really hard to accumulate charges anywhere, so yeah. Um, so this is true. <laughs> and um, so the, the value of Kirchhoff's rules is that it highlights the very basic facts about circuits that you'll be using. It's not telling you anything you don't already know, but what it's telling you is that these are important facts for you to utilize in solving a circuit. Let me give you the loop rule. So loop rule tells you um, this. Um, so it involves a loop, as the name says, and um, I guess, let me ask you this question, just so that to help you start thinking about what loops are. How many loops do you see here? In this, in this one circuit, how many loops do you see? Okay, I hear two. Okay, let me go. How many people see only one loop? Okay, how many people see only two loops? Okay, how many people see up to three loops? Okay, how many people see four loops or more? Anyone see four loops or more? No one see four loops or more? All right, let me draw the three loops that some of you are thinking. Yeah, there's at least three loops here. Three sort of um, independent, three loops. So there's one loop here. So, you know, you imagine going in a loop. Like this is, imagine this is like a road. And you start at one point, you take a little journey, go around, see if you can come back to the same point that you started. That's one loop. And you can do the same thing here. Start here, go around, and come back to the same point. That's another loop. And the other third loop that some of you are realizing is I can, let's say, start here, and I can go around the entire circuit, and then come back to the same point. That's another loop that's not like the other two loops. Um, and the 
To tell you the truth, I think there should be an unlimited number of loops. Not that um, it's useful, but let me draw one other loop that, you know, if, so, you know, this is if you're trying to be difficult. Um, but if you're trying to be difficult, you could call this a loop. Uh, let's see. Mm, I could start off from here, go around this path, go down this way, come down here, and refuse to end here, keep going, and then go around here, and then come back here. That's a loop. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that you should define loops that way. So here, the maximum number of useful loops is three. So, um, but so with the loops, what I want to start, what I want to start you to thinking in terms of is um, really the only thing that's required in a loop is that you're starting and ending at the same point. There's not other than, you know, you can, you can jump around in the circuit. <laughs> other than those two things, there's nothing really restricting how you define your loops. So, um, so you know, that, so when we talk about loop rule in Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff's rules, I'm just gonna mess up my, um, Kirchhoff's rules, um, so that's uh, what, so it's that kind of loop that it's referring to. So you know what, let's just be difficult. And let's say we are talking about the orange loop that I drew, not any of the other saner loops that's here. So I want to be able to make some kind of statement about um, these loops that I have drawn. I'm just going to erase the current marks because um, that's easier. So let's say you know we are going with the craziest loop I've drawn, the orange one. And um, I want to um, I want to say something about it. And I think uh, one thing I can say something about as I imagine going around this crazy loop is I can t think about voltage change. So you know, it's a circuit, when you're, whenever you're dealing with a circuit, there's always going to be only three things you're interested in. Voltage, resistance, and current. In fact, actually, sorry, two things. Voltage and current. And resistance happens to be one of the ways voltage and current can be related. But one, as we start introducing other circuit elements like capacitor, actually you have seen capacitor, you will realize there's really two things that you are always interested in the circuit, voltage and current. And it's a question of how do you relate those two. So as I think about this loop, uh, all right, current sounds complicated. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna focus on the voltage. So as I start at this point, this is my starting point on the loop, what I can look at is, all right, what are my changes in voltage? How much does the voltage change? as I go across this element. Everyone agrees voltage should change as I go across the battery? Okay, how much does the voltage change as I go across this register? How much does the voltage change as I go across here? How much does voltage change as I go across here? And so on, skip over here. And then how much does the voltage change as I go across here? And then back across here, and then across here. So I am going to imagine uh, I, Add up all the changes of voltage as I go around the loop. What value do you think this should be? Zero. zero. Why zero? It's the correct answer. It's the correct intuition, but I want you to be able to justify it. Sorry, um, I didn't catch the first half. Voltage. Voltage out from the. There's no quite. It, it's not voltage out. I guess um, this is the intuition I want you to have. Um, so voltage, as we talked about, relates to potential energy, right? Uh, what's the one parameter that potential energy depends on? There's one dynamic quantity that all potential energies depend on. Gravitational potential energy, electrical potential energy, position, yeah. Potential energy is energy of position. So uh, when I had this, um, had this thing going through this loop, 
it's the gravitational analog of that would be me saying, all right, I take this mass and I'm going to take it on loops. Sometimes I'll move sideways, sometimes it'll move up and then down and then, you know, some complicated path completes a loop, comes back to the same point to where it was. And I ask you, what is the total change in the potential energy of this mass? And you say it's zero, like Crystal says. Um, why is it zero? It's at the same position. So, you know, when you add up all those complicated changes, well, as long as you come back to the same point, the, all those changes are guaranteed to add up to zero. But sometimes, you know, people say potential energy is path independent or all that stuff. So all of that comes down to say, when you add up all those changes over a loop, it must add up to zero. But, so this is uh, something else that you already kind of knew. I mean, so I'm giving, going through this long discussion to make sure that it makes intuitive sense. But the short version is that it should make intuitive sense. Like, I'm not telling you anything new here. And um, so these are the two rules that we use for solving any circuit. So the rest of the class today will be that demonstration. I am going to use these two rules, the fact that these are true, to, and um, Ohm's law from time to time, to uh, derive many of, the, um, many of the, some of the formulas that you might already know. How many people here know how to add registers in series? Uh, how many people here know how to add them in parallel? Some of you. Um, so I haven't given you those formulas yet. I'm actually just going to drive it in the class today using these tools. 